Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Barkis of Thalmology Tutorials. One of my students has requested for color coding of the ophthalmic diagrams. And it is very important to know about the color coding system for the various ophthalmic lesions like the corneal lesions, retinal lesions, the gonioscopic findings. So how to do the color coding for all these structures of the eye. Okay. So I thought of uh, covering this color coding in few videos so that it will be helpful for your exams also and in clinical practice also. So first of all, why we should do the color coding? As you all know, this is one of the ways of documenting what we have observed. So instead of writing in so many sentences and pages, you can just draw the diagram and coat the lesions with appropriate color. That is the perfect documentation of the clinical picture. So why we should document is the next question because it is practice worldwide so it is a standard clinical practice so whatever you do here can be appreciated by any other ophthalmologist who is seeing it anywhere in the world so it is a standard clinical practice it also carries the important medical legal aspect so once you draw the diagram it is the evidence to show that what the patient had okay and the next is it will help in explaining the lesions to the patient very easily they can understand the things easily and even for the follow-up the patient will understand whether their corneal lesions or retinal lesions are improving or worsening so it is easy to explain to the patient as well as for the follow-up and as you all know this is a simple and the cheapest way of documenting the things you all know that there are various gadgets to document the corneal lesions or even the retinal lesions but this is the simplest and cheapest way to document the most important is it will improve your observational skills once you start documenting what you are seeing you will carefully look into the lesion okay you may miss the clock hours you may miss the size of the lesion when you casually examine and just write the treatment if you want to document it you will carefully look into what exactly the lesion is okay so it will improve the observation skills of the student okay the only controversial thing for this color coding is some people say that it is time consuming not exactly once you start practicing this color coding it becomes really easy and as the time passes you will start writing all the lesions with a perfect color coding in your subconscious level only okay so it will not be time consuming only thing what is needed is the practice so hope you will all follow this color coding system for various ophthalmic lesions so today i will be discussing about the color coding for corneal lesions okay so what you need when you want to document the corneal lesions so obviously you need the color pencils of black color brown green red blue and yellow you can either carry these six colors or you can have the pen which has the four colors of black green red blue and you can carry just yellow and the brown color that way it becomes little easy to carry the things okay so how you draw the corneal lesions so the corneal lesion should be drawn in how it is seen the diffuse illumination with the slit lamp and how it is seen with the cross section with the oblique illumination in the slit lamp Whenever you are using the vital stains, do make a mention of it in the corneal diagram. And the measurements, especially when you are dealing with the corneal lesions like the corneal ulcer or the operations. Okay. I think this question will be there in so many students' mind like how to draw the diffuse illumination structure or how to draw the slit or the oblique view corneal diagrams. Okay. So when you are documenting the cornea under diffuse illumination, you must know some basic things like so this is the cornea okay and this is the pupillary area so this is usually represented in the clock hours so this starts with one o'clock two three four five six so from one to twelve so the uppermost pole is the twelve o'clock position and the lowermost pole is the six o'clock position if you take it as the right time the three o'clock position will be the nasal side and the nine o'clock position will be the temporal side Similarly, for the left eye, 9 o'clock becomes the nasal side and 3 o'clock becomes the temporal side. So, this is how the clock hours are represented. Because you have to show the lesions according to the clock hours. And the next demarcation which you should know is the zones of the cornea. Okay. So, the cornea which is measuring around 11.5 to 11.7 millimeter is divided into three zones. The central part which is over the pupillary area is called as the central zone or the pupillary zone. Okay. Then surrounding the central zone, the area what we have, this area, okay, is called as mid-peripheral zone. So this is called as mid-peripheral zone which measures around 4 to 8 millimeters. So from this mid-peripheral area, 
till the limbus what is called as peripheral zone which measures about 8 to 11.5 millimeters in the circular diameter so this is about the zones as well as the clock cover representation of the corneal diagram so whenever you are mentioning about any lesion you should say that say it is there between 1 to 2 o'clock position in the peripheral zone or in the mid peripheral zone or the pupillary zone likewise okay so that is about the diffuse illumination when it comes to the slit or the oblique view here we are representing the various layers of the cornea in the cut section okay so when you make a slit in the slit lamp and examine you will be examining the various layers of the cornea like the epithelium is seen first followed by the stroma then the endothelium so you should comment about the epithelium the stromal part as well as the endothelium in the slit or the oblique view so let's see how these lesions are marked with the various color coding system so the black color is used whenever you want to outline the cornea as it is shown in this picture if you want to outline the limbus also you can use the black color whenever you are representing the corneal tear okay so this is how the corneal tear is represented if there is a corneal nevus you can show it like this if there are scars again the linear scar or the vertical scar okay then the sutures are either shown as broken lines or like the infinity this is how the sutures are represented if there is a foreign body show it with a dot or the how much ever the foreign body is there and even the various corneal degenerations can be represented with the black color and the corneal thinning is represented in the cut section or the oblique illumination of the cornea so if you want to show the corneal thinning you can reduce the thickness of this cornea like this okay depending upon which part of the cornea is thinned out say there is inferior part thinning by thinning out this width of the cornea okay so let me recap now the outline of the cornea outline of the limbus is shown here the corneal tear corneal nevus the spheroidal degeneration again which are seen in the interpalpebral area can be represented with the black color the scars sutures which are shown as broken line or as uh, the suture mark the contact lens can be represented with the black uh, color that is it is shown like the dotted line wherever the contact lens is placed okay if it is in the center fine if it is displaced you can show the displaced contact lens likewise the foreign bodies are shown in the black color degenerative and the dystrophies and the corneal thinnings so this is about the black color so let's move on to the things which can be represented with the red color so first is the blood vessels so in the blood vessels we have the superficial blood vessels are the superficial vascularization of the cornea and the deep vascularization of the cornea so the superficial vascularization is shown like the wavy lines which will be starting from outside the limbus okay whereas the deep vascularization is shown by straight lines which will begin just at the limbus okay so this is the deep vascularization this is superficial vascularization you can also show congestion like the conjunctival congestion and the circumcorneal congestion the circumcorneal congestion is shown just around the cornea with a line like this and the conjunctival congestion is shown in the superficial or the peripheral part of the conjunctiva and if you are using the rose bengal stain you can always represent it with a red color if there are some filaments which are taking up your rose bengal stain or any dead and devitalized tissue can be shown with a red color so to summarize the red color is used for blood vessels the superficial and the deep blood vessels superficial are shown by the wavy line which are starting outside the limbus whereas deep uh, vascularization is shown by the straight line which just which will just start at the limbus the congestion can be shown even the rose bengal stain so moving on to the next stain which is used that is brown okay so whenever you want to show the pigments over the endothelium of the cornea or the old kps you can use the brown color that i will show with the uh, cross sectional diagram even the fleischer's ring which is seen in the keratoconus can be shown with a brown color that is the iron deposition over the apex at the base of the cone in the keratoconus can be represented with brown color so if you want to show the pigment dispersion over the endothelium you can show like this okay the pigmentary changes over the endothelium even the old kps can be shown in the endothelium of the cornea in the cut section or the oblique view of this corneal diagram 
Next moving on to the blue color. The blue color is used to represent the corneal edema as well as the bullet. So in the corneal edema as you all know we have the epithelial edema, the stromal edema and even the DM folds. So when you want to show the epithelial edema you can show fine okay, circles like this. That represents the epithelial edema in this diffuse illumination. When you want to show the stromal edema you can shade the part of the cornea like this. By shading the part of the cornea you are representing stromal edema. And the DM folds you can represent by wavy line like this okay so this is with the diffuse illumination so how we show the same thing with the slick view so in the slick view as you know this is representing the epithelium so write the small circles with a blue color that represents the epithelial edema so the stromal edema in the stromal part you can show you can show the shading here that is the stromal edema and even the dm folds can be shown by wavy lines in the stroma the bullae again are represented with larger circles okay so these represent the bullae in the cornea so the blue color is used for corneal edema in the corneal edema we have epithelial edema stromal edema dm folds epithelial edema shown by small circles stromal edema by shading the stromal part and the dm folds by the wavy lines in the blue color so next move on to the next color that is yellow. Yellow color is used to represent the contact lens deposit. So as I told the contact lens is represented with your dotted line with a black color. So suppose there is some deposit in the contact lens. You can write that at this position there was a deposit in the contact lens. It can also represent hypopion that I will show with the oblique uh, section. The fresh capis again and the infiltrates. So if there is any infiltrates you can show with the yellow color and even the ulcered area can be shown with the yellow color. So in the oblique illumination you can show the fresh capis with the yellow color which are shown in the endothelium of the cornea. So if you want to show the hypopion usually here the iris comes so the hypopion will be sitting here. So you can shade it like this and show the hypopion. So the fresh capis hypopion are represented with the yellow color. The next color which is used for coding is the green color. It can be used to show the epithelial defect. Suppose there is some epithelial defect here. So write the epithelial defect and shade it with the green color. That is the representation of epithelial defect. It can be used to show SP case that is superficial punctate keratitis. So multiple superficial punctate keratitis can be shown like this. Delen that is a defect in the superficial part of the cornea that can be shown like this. The filaments which are seen in your dry eyes can be shown like this and even the FS stain suppose there is some part of the cornea which is taking up the stain can be represented with green color so the green color is used to show the epithelial defect the SP case are shown with the green color delen is shown with the green color the filaments as well as the FS stain so this is how you represent various corneal lesions with a color coding system so hope this is clear now let's draw a corneal ulcer by using this color coding system so if you have some bangle in your hand that is very easy when you want to draw any corneal diagrams so you can write a bigger circle with your bangle representing the limbus and then a smaller circle in the brown color representing the pupae so let's draw a corneal ulcer now. so whenever you want to draw a corneal ulcer now so say there is a corneal ulcer in the inferior part of the cornea so this is the epithelial defect what you will observe in the slit lamp examination. So you will write that in the green color. Then you will have to measure this uh, ulcer both horizontally as well as vertically and make a mention of it. How much it is measuring. And if there is slough dar infiltrate part in the, in the center of this ulcer, you should represent our shade with the yellow color. Okay. And there can be edema around this corneal ulcer which can be shown as a shaded part of or as the epithelial edema depending upon the lesion okay so if there is epithelial edema show with the smaller circles like this if there is stromal edema shade it like this okay so this is how you write the corneal ulcer so how we write it in the slit view suppose there is a ulcer here in the inferior half of the cornea so don't write this part of the cornea here just write there is some epithelial defect and the depth of this ulcer can be represented in this oblique section. So how much is the depth? 
so how much of the stroma is involved can be represented here if it is just superficial stroma then you will show like this if it is very deep ulcer then you will show like a very deep ulcer which is extending into the greater part of the stroma okay and then you will show the infiltrate or the ulcer part here in the center again if there is corneal edema surrounding this you can show with the smaller circles and if there is stromal edema you can show with the shading of the stroma so this is how you represent the corneal ulcer so the important thing is you should measure the horizontal and the vertical diameter and you should say in which area it is so in this case corneal ulcer is extending from almost 4 o'clock position to 7 o'clock position involving the mid periphery as well as some part of the peripheral cornea so the examiner or any other ophthalmologist can imagine the corneal ulcer by seeing your diagram or by your explanation that is the representation of the corneal ulcer so hope this video on the color coding system for the cornea is helpful to all of you if you like my videos please do subscribe to my channel press the bell icon for further notifications please do like and share my videos and leave your valuable comments in the comment section thank you so much